Code three and a seven. 34, 34, to the face. During Mardi Gras, we do still run shootings. We do still run cardiac arrests. You know, there's still New Orleans going on. We're going to a shooting. Dude, first night, and it's crazy. Right. Well, just because it's Mardi Gras doesn't mean criminals take the day off. Man, get shot in the head on Mardi Gras. No, that's the part that you hate to hear. Like, you hear somebody shot, it's Mardi Gras. You almost think somebody playing around with a gun. They could be shot in the leg or something. And then when they come back and say that they got one in the head. Take somebody evil to walk up to somebody and shoot, shoot yeah. them in the head, my man. Definitely right about that. All right, we've got a code four. Jeremy's on scene. 3220, we on scene. Is he awake? Yeah, he, he is? Oh, excellent. With that kind of injury, I'm expecting to not really do anything. I'm expecting to walk up and see someone with an injury that's not compatible with life. Watch that case and right there, Titus. It's Mardi Gras, man. So that time is supposed to be a time of fun, but yet it's a time of violence for this particular family. What you got, Jeremy? Look, shot left foot and shot in the head. Right here and here. Eyes are all swollen up, and he's got holes on each side. Like entrance exit? It looks like entrance entrance only. 3220 contact. I've seen a lot of gunshot wounds, but to have that kind of injury and be completely awake, man, it was just all striking to me. Hold up, he's awake and he's been shot in the head. I got to. I let Mama put this on your neck, all right? All right. Let's get him going while we got a chance. Hold his head. Yeah, watch that. Uh... All right, come on back. Hey, man, you awake? Mm -hmm. My name's Dan. I'm a paramedic, OK? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go on taking you to the hospital. Mm -hmm. You allergic to any medicines? Mm -hmm. You take any medicines? Mm -hmm. You have any medical conditions? Mm -hmm. OK. What is your name? Telly Hankton? Yeah. Give me this hand. Give me this hand. Tell, tell, take me this hand. Besides your head, are you hurting anywhere else from there? My head hurts. Your head hurt? Yeah. Hey, look, I need this arm, Tell. Mm -hmm. Keep talking to me, dude. What's going on? What what's going on, man? You remember what happened? Oh, no. No? All right. I got a blood pressure, one part of the style. Thank you. As many gunshots I've been on, I've never seen a through and through like that, how it went in one temple out the other. I mean, the way it happened is just only you can see that on television. You don't see that in real life. I did you just take nice deep breaths, my man. Nice You're going to feel a big stick. Oh, ah. Big stick, do not move your arm. One, two, three. I know, man. I'm sorry. All right, man. We out the door, dude. I need you to stay awake, OK? You awake? Stay awake. You were driving that silver car? Yeah? All right. Someone that wasn't shot in the head, I can look at them and see if their eyes are open and blinking. With him, I couldn't do that. Tally, oh. stay awake. That's a big factor to know whether or not your patient's deteriorating or not is if they remain conscious. Hey, it's Dan with New Orleans Unit 3220 en route to you with an approximately 25 to 30-year-old male. Uh, Chief complained of multiple gunshot wounds. He's currently awake and oriented. He's got a gunshot wound to his right temple and a gunshot wound to his left temple. It appears that he has uh, likely an entrance to his left temple and an exit to his right temple. He also has a single GSW to the anterior surface of his left foot. No other injuries noted at this time. He was actually driving a vehicle when this happened, and someone opened fire on his vehicle and struck him in his temple over here. And you want to get him to the hospital quick because you don't know what's going on inside of his head. He may be bleeding a lot. It may have hit his brain. It may have done more damage than what we suspect, and he can deteriorate rapidly in the truck. 3220 at the hospital, 3218, both times like He's in bad shape. Did you just talk to him? I kept talking to him. He kept talking back. So you responded every time you, uh... 100%. All right. And he knew the answer to every question I asked him. He had a big-ass hole in his head. It went through and through, man. His temple. That's a lot of damage. That's, his right eye was, like, he had a, a complete uh, open globe to the right. Really? And then his left had a fixed and dilated pupil, so, like, 
Who did you shot with? It looked like a 40, huh? That was a lot of damage, so it had to have been probably a 9 or a 40. Man, you get shot with anything in the head. Yeah, but I mean, a 22 might bounce off, depending on how thick your head is. One of them T-Row heads, you never know. All right, all right. You know him for the nigga. He'll live. I mean, but he'll never see again. City of New Orleans, 911. What's your emergency? We have someone choking. We're giving him the Heimlich. We need someone out here immediately. OK, and do we know what he's choking on? <laughs> oh, he's a beast. Tell me, is he able to breathe at all? No, he's losing consciousness. He's not able to stand up okay. anymore. All right, I have fire and EMS en route to you, OK? He's blue, ma'am. He's blue. He's throwing at the mouth, and he's blue. Can you turn him on his side? Ma'am, we need help immediately. Listen to me. We need to do the Heimlich maneuver again, ma'am. You're going to put your arms around his waist and make a fist for me. Arms around his waist. Grab him with the other hand above the belly button. Jerk really hard, and it's a quick motion up into his stomach. Up into his stomach. And I keep doing that until he can breathe, talk, or cry. As hard as you can. As hard as you can. You're going to have to keep going until they arrive. Please, please, please. Ma'am, he's blue. He's blue. All right, ma'am, they're in route to you. I am headed to a person that was initially choking on a piece of meat and then went unresponsive and stopped breathing. So this sounds like a full airway obstruction, which can very rapidly then progress into respiratory and cardiac arrest. If it is a full obstruction, especially with food, we can try to, you know, pull it out of their throat, see if we can ventilate them to the point where they start responding again and breathing. This is one of those true life or death moments where every second matters because there are two things that are happening. Number one, he's not getting any oxygen to his brain and to his organs. And number two, his heart's gonna stop. Right here? Oh, yes, he sure is. Okay, okay. Okay, we're gonna help him. On scene. No, 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 don't do the Heimlich. You can stop, don't do the Heimlich. We're gonna get him. Once a patient reaches the level of being unresponsive, they cannot support themselves in an upright position, and so the Heimlich maneuver is not appropriate anymore for this patient. Do y'all know what he's choking on? Oh, Hurry up and get the stretcher. Get out of the way. Hey, don't get on the stretcher. Let's go. Get everything off. Get his legs. Hold on, guys. I got Hold it. On. Everyone relax. Okay. You ready? Yeah, what? He's at Hagenol right now. I am responding to a call for a male that is choking on a piece of steak. While choking, this patient started to panic, which is how he maybe ended up outside. He is unresponsive, purple from head to toe, and barely breathing. This guy has a full airway obstruction. Grab the airway roll if you can get the gills. All right, buddy. We got All right, you, we, we got, got you, man. Got I know, I know. You got you. The first thing that I do is grab our video laryngoscope and the McGill forceps. So in being able to visualize what is in his throat, I can come in with the forceps, grab it, and pull it out manually. Oh, let go, buddy. Let go. There we go. Hold on. Hold on. OK. Oh, good, good, good. Sit up, sit up, sit up. Sit up. Hey, man. He's still got a large chunk of it in there. Spit? There we go. <coughs> Can you speak to us? Tell us your name. There you go. All right. Can we try to put that oxygen mask on you for a minute, bud? All right. Just take some deep breaths for now. It's, and you're also going to feel some swelling and some things like that. So don't want you to keep coughing if we can't get anything up, all right? He's able to talk to us, but he doesn't really know what happened. He doesn't realize he just almost died. Oh, you were kind of blue, You man. were purple, yeah. So I would, um, if this is what he's going to do. I'm just going to go for like. Yeah, I would go to the hospital just because he's going to have some airway swelling. They may want to just tube him. Is that your family out there, buddy? I'm going to go let them know just since they're, since they're so freaked. What? Hey guys, so we have the piece out. He's up, he's breathing on his own, okay? Um, we're gonna, of course, transport him to the hospital because I do still, there is still a piece in there. But he is up, he's breathing on his own, and he's aware. Okay. 
Yeah, you can you can look at him for a second. They just want to look at him for a second. But we still have a lot to do, okay? His outcome should be phenomenal. Without our intervention, this person could have very much been deceased. 6249, you can show me clear. So 3244, code three to university with one patient. Yeah, that was a bad one. That dude almost died in front of him. I just pulled a whole piece of steak out of your mouth. That's a sexy fate. That's a sexy fate. That dude's got to be so thankful. What is the emergency? They got a lot of problems back there. It's smoking bad. It's got black smoke and it's on fire. Are you inside the building? <laughs> Sir, hello, are you there? <laughs> hello? <laughs> yes, sir. I ready to send this over to dispatch. How many floors of stories are there? The second floor. Yeah, it's burning back. The glass popping and everything. Do not try to put the fire out. Do not carry anything that is on fire. And do not use the elevator. Hello? Hello? When you go in this apartment, let me cross the Fenway Drive. It's an apartment fire. 6220, put me in right to that uh, fire, please. Please, let's get another unit rolling out that way. Now the 13th advised people still inside the building. As a former firefighter, I immediately think of the time of day. Families are probably at home, and I really hope that everybody smelled smoke, they were able to get out this fire. Right off the interstate, do we see it? Oh. Oh. All right, people, y'all ready? Damn. Man, I hope nobody ain't here, man. Are you all on that scene yet? Yeah, we're here, and it is, it's rolling. All right, keep me advised, see if we need to activate an MCI. If you hang out here on Talk One, I'll update you here in about two minutes. Hey, hey. Our EMS med surge bus is used for MCIs, or mass casualty incidents. Critical patients still, of course, go by ambulance as quickly as they can from the scene, but any stable patient or walking wounded can be transported in bulk on this bus. Y'all know if they have any patients? They got a lot of old people coming out of there. And half of them are being drugged out by other people. Right here. Right here. Hey, sweetie, what's going on? OK. Hey, look, look, let me put this on your finger, love. You All right, Keely, we're with one patient now. Hey, look, let me listen to your lungs, sweetheart. Good job. Breathe. Nice deep breath. Yeah, you may want to uh, send another unit and maybe a sprint this way. They don't know if everybody's out of the building. Nice deep breath. All right, good. All right, you sound good, all right? Do you want to go to the hospital? You know? Smoke inhalation is a big concern, because when they inhale that smoke, that's a lot of bad stuff going into the lungs, and that could cause all type of problems. If your underlying health condition is asthma, that just made it worse by 10. If you get a little tight, let us know, all right? How many people? Got a ton of people in the back. Yeah. How many years do you have out here? Just us. I got another one. I told them we need another one this way. And we got a sprint unit coming this way. I'm pulling up on scene now. I'm hoping that most of the people are out. When I get on scene, this fire is huge. It is roaring. This could be really bad. The whole complex is up in smoke. I need to find out how many patients we have, how many fatalities we have, if any, if we know if anybody is still trapped in the building. I need to start getting together what resources we need to bring in. We got about 50 people standing here, one possible patient. I don't know what's on the other end. I can't get to them. I'd like to get the RTA buses just to put people in yeah, to sit. And that way they're not in the cold. Like, I'm hoping that most of the people are out. 
We need to get these people some type of a warm environment for them to sit in. RTAs, they have all the public buses that run regular bus routes. So in the middle of the night, there's not a lot of buses. However, these people are out in the cold. We need some way to put these people before they start having medical issues and become patients. I got the bus coming. Where's my man? Exactly pretty good right now. Okay. Right now. They tried. So I just talked to Fire Command. They think that everyone is out. Hey, so look, we, we got an RTA bus coming out here. That way y'all have somewhere warm to sit, okay? We notify the Red Cross and see if we can get them out here. Please. See if they have extra blankets that they can bring. I see all the kids. So you got everybody? Sure. All right, good, man. I was in the farm right across from me. Well, I'm glad you got out, all right? Help me out. Is that your, is that your bag? Yeah, I can't lift it. Come on. I absolutely think that we not only are providing, you know, medical attention to these people, but emotional support. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. Got people that lost everything. I mean, you sit there and listen to them, give them a hug. You know, that's, sometimes that's all people need. They just need to be hugged, and they just need a shoulder to cry on. If we can't help you medically, we'll help you emotionally, too. <laughs> Y'all okay? Yeah. You good, little man? All right. Stay warm, all right? Look, we're gonna go straight across the street. All right, so we got the Red Cross coming. We got RTA buses coming in so that they can stay warm. But right now, it looks like everybody's out. Hopefully, everything just stays like it is. If y'all want to get warm, go hang out on the bus, okay? Y'all got mask, extra mask. I'm sorry y'all going through all this. That's your little boy? Yeah. Y'all, you want me to push him down there? Yeah. All right. Will we be able to get back in our apartment tonight? Baby, I don't think so. Not tonight, because they got to secure the perimeter, then they got to go check to see everybody in there, they don't know how the structure is. I don't know, but I don't think not tonight. You got to think, man, so if you're in a fire and you come out, which is great, man, you've been blessed, you know, you're out, nobody's hurt, but everything that you love and own is in your apartment. I've been to this apartment complex several times. These are good people. These good, hardworking people, the little that they have is in their apartment. And it's just a sad occurrence that this is happening, because I can empathize with these people. As Ray Cross is on their way right now, and they're going to get with you guys and give y'all information and definitely probably find somewhere, somewhere for y'all to stay. It's hard to not get emotional on a scene like this, especially when I've seen a little kid in his grandfather's lap. It really tugs at my heartstrings, and I really feel for everyone that's in, standing out here watching their home go up in flames. I am pleasantly surprised that everybody got out of this. Well, I never would have thought everybody would have got out of this. Absolutely not. This was definitely your best case scenario. Yeah. Marty got my boat right into a wreck. Right up in there. Uh, safely I safe. Thank you. I do not remember being this tired in a long time. But I mean, we literally just worked two 16 hour days in a row. Yeah. We arrived on scene to a car crash between an SUV and a taxi cab. They actually hit so hard that the door was ripped off one of the vehicles and was stuck to the other. Hello. When that happens, you definitely kind of perk up because there could be some serious injury involved. Hey, what's your name? <laughs> what's your name? <laughs> All right. Broken what? Oh, OK. We see a female laying across the back seat with an obviously broken leg. How are we doing this? Let's put a board in here, slide her out. It's a 10 fit, right? Yeah. Open or closed? It looks closed. Everybody else is OK? Yeah. yeah, there's a little kid with a little bump on his eye, but he's fine. Cool. I think we need to slide her actually out. That way, we can kind of support her leg as much as possible. When you have a long bone fracture, you want to make sure that you mobilize that bone from moving around, especially when you're moving the patient around, because bad things can happen. You have a lot of blood vessels that run up and down your legs, and it can possibly cause you an injury that make things worse. All right, this is really going to suck. 
I'm gonna go ahead and warn you, but I'm gonna try to make it as easy as possible, okay? If you need to squeeze me, scream, whatever you need to do, do not be ashamed, okay? All right, I'm gonna grab you under your arms and I'm gonna pull you onto this board. That's it. That's the worst of it. Straighten it out. I'm gonna just move your torso. Uncross your arms for just a second. Nick, this is you down there. That's gonna support your leg, okay? It's almost over. All right, that's it. Just relax, okay? We're gonna get you in the truck. We're gonna give you some medicine. I'm gonna go set that up. All right. Nick, you want morphine? Yeah. These are the last few bumps, okay? Darling is getting you in. You all right, boo? And this lady was in so much pain that she's actually physically shaking from the shock factor. And it kind of pulls at your heartstrings. So you want to make it as comfortable as possible for them. Luckily for us, we have medicine that we can give to kind of knock the edge off. My kids are okay. Everybody's fine. Everybody's good. And you're going to be fine. Yeah, you're just going to have to have a little surgery on your leg, kind of put everything back together. But you're going to be OK. So this is going to be morphine. Straighten this arm out for me. Went ahead and gave five to All start. Right. Cool. So she got five uh, morphine in. Beautiful. What'd you get your leg caught on? Do you remember? Was it the center console? I don't know. I might have had my legs full. Okay. And my husband's an ER doctor. Okay. Where at? Okay. Y'all here visiting? Yeah. Okay. You good? Yeah, we're good. Thank you. 3232 shows how much a Toro, one patient, 11012. My four year old was right in front of me in the booster. Well, he was completely fine. So everybody was fine. I decided you'd be unfortunate enough to get your leg broken, but it's OK. Exercise classes. Oh. Well, you might not be doing that too much, but I guarantee you you'll be back on your feet quickly. This is nice and easy. It's a clean break, so it should be really easy to repair. The 35-year-old female, she's got a tip rib fracture. It's closed. She's got an IV with some morphine on board. She's fully mobilized. We'll see you in a couple minutes. It really sucks, though. Think about it. I mean, people just coming out of here, have a good time, trying to pay attention to the parades, and next thing you know, you got a leg fracture that's pretty much going to keep you out of. Oh man, she caught a bad break. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> there you go. The way she went. 32, 32, 29, 62, 15. Male and female both shot. 15. I'm in ride from two way. We get a call for a double 34S. We got a male and a female victim that's been shot. 3234 to Tura, 2347. Looks like PD's on scene up there. 6215, I'm on scene, and a PD's on scene. We have a drive up at uh, UH. Been shot, female has been shot. You got a victim? They got a female shot, just drove up at UH. I'm okay. looking for a scene, and I'm looking at all these houses to see if he crawled somewhere or something. Dispatcher's telling us about a female victim just pulled up at the trauma center. So we're looking for one victim. I have a gentilia poison, 3083. One victim. Somebody's shooting at us. All of a sudden, gunfire erupts. We jump in our vehicles and re roll out. All operations go to Make sure y'all let uh, FD know to get shots fired in the area and not to go on scene. What channel PD's on? Channel 4. I see the police racing towards the gunfire to try and secure the scene, putting themselves in harm's way to keep us safe. It's hard not to admire their courage. In 16 years, I've never had that happen. It uh, makes you realize how vulnerable you really are. All right, they're giving a code four right now. Code four. All right, I'll just Once more police got on scene and secured it, we rolled in. There's somebody in here? Patient contact. And actually found a male victim that had been shot. Sir, are you injured? I just got hit in the ear. You got hit in the ear? You got shrapnel in your head. What is that? That piece is a bullet. Piece is a bullet in your head here, in your neck here, and your ear. <clears throat> He was definitely very angry and upset, understandable, considering the situation. 
Want to get on a stretcher, babe? Yeah, 3232 is going to be transport, and you can clear the second unit. We are going to take him to the trauma center just in case something has gone deeper into his neck. We see life change in a matter of seconds every day, but you don't ever think that it could be your life changing within seconds. It just kind of brings you back to reality of how dangerous that job really is. Definitely get the hair on the back of your neck standing up when you get out of your unit and you hear gunfire. It was close. <laughs> it was way too close for comfort. The big heroes of the Big Easy are back in a new season of Nightwatch. Your new caller, 20-year-old female. 